Now, here's how I understand this heart transplant. The heart of stone in verse 26, the heart of stone means uh, John Piper was dead spiritually. Stone means you touch it, it doesn't feel anything. Bang on it, resist, break your knife. Stone, cold, hard, unresponsive, unreceptive to spiritual reality. (laughs) This stone, very strange stone that I was, could feel many things. No, did it have desires. Food, sex, popularity. So this stone has desires. It's just stone when it comes to Jesus. <clears throat> he's boring. He's uninteresting. He is not beautiful. He certainly isn't my treasure. Thank you very much. Money, popularity, what you name it, whatever your treasure is with Jesus, that's signaling, sign, signaling you've got this stone for a heart. Everybody has desires, but only people who have that heart taken out and another heart put in feel that. Now, why does he call it a heart of flesh? I mean, that mixes us up, right? Because flesh is not what... I mean, in, in John 3, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. The word flesh there means what you are by human nature apart from any divine intervention. That's not the meaning here. The meaning here is contrasted with stone. And what is the contrast with stone? Soft, alive, easily pricked. The heart of flesh, this imagery of I'm going to put in you a heart of flesh simply means a heart that's now responsive, receptive. It feels spiritual reality. When Christ is lifted up, it says, yes. It can feel the worth of Jesus. Once Jesus was not worthy, now he's everything That's the difference between stone and flesh. That's what happens in the new birth. We we need more than forgiveness. We need more than cleansing. We need to be new. New thinking and new feeling and new valuing and new treasuring. And that's what the new birth is designed to do here.